Shining brightly in the 2011 Solar Decathlon, Purdue University finished second out of 19 teams in the Washington, D.C. Solar House competition. The objective was to design and build an affordable, energy-efficient, solar-powered home. So we wanted a home that showed you didn't have to give up your modern comforts and amenities to live sustainably. So what we have is a two bedroom, one bath home. Although it looks like what you've maybe seen before, there's a lot of features in the home that make it more sustainable, but also saves you money in the long run. The Purdue Solar Racing Team built a street legal solar powered car that gets amazing 2200 miles per gallon. The vehicle won the urban division of the Shell Eco Marathon Americas, an international contest for students to design and build fuel-efficient vehicles. The event was held in Houston, Texas. Purdue Electric Carts raced in May at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the first collegiate EV Grand Prix. 30 teams from 10 universities competed as part of Emerging Tech Day. The second Purdue EV Grand Prix took place on campus in April. The greatest spectacle in college racing, the 54th annual Purdue Grand Prix also took place in April. Justin Pinnix from IUPUI repeated as champion. <laughs> Purdue's advances in energy efficiency weren't limited to vehicles. In October, the university enlarged the mechanical engineering building by dedicating the Gatewood Wing. This is Purdue's first building to be certified in the nationwide LEED or Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design program. In addition to providing first-rate labs, classrooms, and collaborative spaces for our students and faculty, the building itself makes a statement about sustainability and about changing the world. The 41,000 square foot addition includes flexible classroom space, student commons, computer labs, learning labs, research labs, offices, and conference rooms. Three other buildings also opened this fall. Marriott Hall is the new home for the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. Hanley Hall is the new home for the study of families, children, and human development. November brought the unveiling of the newly expanded and updated Mackey Arena. It was rededicated with ceremonies at both men's and women's games. The sports performance upstairs and the Breeze Academic Center. Students, staff, and the public got a chance to tour the facility, which includes new locker and video viewing rooms, an expanded workout area, and more space to treat injured athletes. For fans, there's new premium seating, larger hallways and bathrooms, and a sports-themed cafe. A new practice basketball court opened in January 2012. Both the men's and women's teams started strong in the new facility. The men beat Miami in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, and the women upset last year's national champion, Texas A&M. For 2010-2011, the women were eliminated by Connecticut in the NCAA second round. After going unbeaten at home for only the second time in its history, the men's team advanced to the third round of the NCAA tournament, where the Boilers lost to Virginia Commonwealth. The volleyball team went to the Sweet 16 for the second year in a row, where the Boilers fell to Florida State. A season highlight was a three-game sweep of number two Nebraska. For the season, volleyball had its best record since 1985, with 29 wins and five losses. Junior Ariel Turner was named Big Ten Player of the Year and All-American. Another successful women's sport in 2011 was crew. The Varsity Eight bested 34 intercollegiate and club teams to earn the gold medal in the finals of the Dad Vale Regatta. This qualified them for the Henley Regatta in England, where they finished second. Revolve! 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 The football team reclaimed the old oaken bucket with an exciting 33-25 victory at IU. The victory propelled the Boilers to their first bowl game since 2007, the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl in Detroit. 
Purdue recovered two onside kicks, and Raheem Mostert returned to kick off 99 yards for a touchdown as the Boilers claimed the 37-32 victory over Western Michigan. The Boilermakers Special 7. Purdue's official mascot, the newly renovated Boilermaker Special Number 7, was dedicated at an early season ceremony. Two other highlights for football included a 26-23 overtime victory over Ohio State. Ecstatic fans rushed the field at the end of the game. And the team pleased alumni with a 21-14 homecoming win over 23rd ranked Illinois. The night before the game, the annual night train parade wound its way through campus. The morning of the game, alumni retreated to a multitude of informational booths and entertainment that included the All-American Marching Band, the Alumni Band, and a flash mob performance by the Varsity Glee Club. Be my baby <laughs> President Franz Cordova again led the marching band as it headed to the stadium. The band was celebrating its 125th anniversary. Proud to present the winning king and queen. Newly crowned homecoming king Gabriel Clark from Strawn, Indiana, and queen Kaylee Waltz from Cicero, Indiana, were introduced at halftime. Our alumni have returned to the greatest university in the world. The tradition of introducing the song Shout just prior to the fourth quarter was handled at homecoming by President Cordova and her husband, Chris. It gives me pleasure to announce. This was Dr. Cordova's final homecoming as president. She announced in July that this would be her last year as head of Purdue. I am going into my fifth year as president of Purdue, and uh, that's uh, just a uh, great honor for me. We've accomplished so much and I want to make this the very best year of my presidency. Right. Cordova's accomplishments have included an increase in reputational rankings, a doubling of research awards, establishment of the Global Policy Research Institute, the development of the new College of Health and Human Sciences, and creation of the Indianapolis Office of Engagement. She says she is proudest that each undertaking has emphasized student achievement. Good evening, Boilermakers. President Cordova began the fall semester welcoming new students to Boiler Gold Rush. About 5,300 students took part in this week-long orientation, which includes meeting faculty and learning Purdue cheers. <laughs> Purdue Pete had fun welcoming students back as well. The Purdue Alumni Association held its annual legacy picnic for students whose parents also attended Purdue. In August, the Alumni Association and John Purdue Club sponsored the Boilermaker Caravan at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Over 350 alumni and friends joined Coach Hope, Coach Shondell, and several Purdue athletes to help kick off successful football and volleyball seasons. Also in August, the Alumni Association helped make Purdue Day at the Indiana State Fair another rousing day of fun and excitement for fairgoers with entertainment and information from all areas of the university. Uh, in addition, though, the provost is responsible for... Successful alumni club events happen year-round. This one in Milwaukee featured provost Tim Sands. We always talked about Purdue being the leading influence but we really want to be the people that, say, CNN or the New York Times or the U.S. government goes to first when there's something happening and they need an expert. And this club picnic in Muncie honored local scholarship winners and gave them a warm send-off to their freshman year. We recognize our class of 1961 alums. And September featured Alumni Weekend, uh, which welcomed the Alumni Leaders Conference, which helps club leaders share ideas and best practices to take back to their local clubs. People tend to, tend to notice. Scholarship winners were honored at the scholarship luncheon. 
So our first 2011 Outstanding Young Alumni. And individual club awards were bestowed at the celebration dinner. Have you met many of the engineers? Alumni attended the annual networking dinner for the Purdue Alumni Student Experience, or PACE. This annual event gives members of Purdue's largest student group a chance to meet and talk with professionals and careers the students are pursuing. One of the more interesting activities held during 2011 by PACE was the Nearly Naked Mile. More than 500 students literally donated the clothes off their backs, followed by running or walking through campus in bathing suits or costumes. Over 800 pounds of clothing were donated to Lafayette Transitional Housing. You want to put a sticker on there if you know where you're going to be? Yeah. As seniors neared the end of their journey at Purdue, the Purdue Alumni Association celebrated the event with Senior Sendoff, providing seniors with a free lunch, information about alumni membership and clubs, and gifts from their schools and colleges. The culmination of their years of hard work resulted in more than 6,600 students receiving degrees in May. We're so proud that you are a member of the Boilermaker family. Among those getting honorary degrees was Chesley Sully Sullenberger, otherwise known as the Hero of the Hudson, for safely landing a disabled passenger jet in the river. He also spoke to the graduates. We never gave up, and in a similar fashion for each of you, no matter how, your, how dire your situation might one day be, know that further action is almost always possible. You see, when we're true to our ideals and we work together, there is little we cannot accomplish. Your Purdue Alumni Association is the gateway for loyal alumni and friends to build relationships with each other and with Purdue University. It's been our pleasure to bring you your university in the 2011 newsreel. Boiler up, hammer down, and hail Purdue. Hey.